Hey everyone, uh, my name is Trevor Daly with Magmod. I almost forgot what my name was. I'm so excited for today's show. Uh, guys, this is gonna be a lot of fun. We have two incredible photographers. I should say three incredible photographers, but but uh, one's a couple. So we're gonna put them together as a, as a group. We got Jesse and Moira LaPlante and Christian Cardona. So um, hang tight, coming up next. Guys, I don't know how we're gonna get all three of us because when I try to squeeze this all in, it just kind of like, <laughs> that's okay. I think everybody wants to see you guys anyways. Um, I, I wanna definitely, let's start out real quick. I, I first just gotta say, you guys are all like the most liked photographers in the Magmod community. Just all the photos that you're always constantly sharing and the amount of like people that just love your images, it's just absolutely incredible. So truly appreciate all of you guys. Moira, Jesse, Christian, thank you so much for being here. Uh, this is going to be quite a treat talking to you. So appreciate that. Thanks, Trevor. Um, Thanks for having us. Yeah. Sure. So for those who don't know you, <laughs> like, like I said, everybody I feel like knows you already. But for those who don't, Moira, why don't you tell everyone about you and Jesse, where you're based out of. Um, and then Jesse, I also, if you don't mind, could you talk a little bit about a workshop that you and uh, Moira and Christian have coming up? Is that cool? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure Perfect. Yeah. So we're, uh, for those of you who don't know us, that's my best bridesmaid impression. <laughs> um, we are Moira and Jesse LaPlante of J. LaPlante Photo, and we are based out of Boulder, Colorado. Um, we do shoot all over Colorado and all over the U.S. and honestly, anywhere that anyone will pay us to photograph a wedding in the world. Love yeah, that. and uh, workshop coming up. We have the pleasure of teaching along with Christian. We're going to be doing that in Colorado, uh, just outside of Denver uh, in November of this year. And we're calling it the Fusion Workshop because we're bringing together uh, two different perspectives, two different styles, two different voices, two different philosophies, and, um, and two different cultures. Two right? different hemispheres. Two di well, north I think and South. Is Columbia, oh. I think, is in is, Columbia is north of the equator, though, right? Yeah. So that. So not two hemispheres, two of all the other things I mentioned though. I'm good at math and English, <laughs> not geography. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, that's gonna go on sale on the 20th of this month, which is a week from tomorrow. Love it, I love it. That That is gonna be one incredible workshop and it looks like it's November 2nd through the 4th, right there in Denver. Yep. And I think I saw, maybe it was on your Instagram or somewhere, you guys are renting a house for everyone to stay in, is that right? We can well, fit. Pro we can fit most everyone we're, in we're the house. We're hoping yeah. that we can fit everyone. If, if we get a lot of couples that sign up, uh, then they can share beds, and we can fit everybody. But if we get individual photographers, we can house Got probably it. eighty percent or something. But uh, yeah, it. we like to keep it kind of all inclusive. We'll have a private chef. Uh, that way, you know, people don't all have to go home at the end of the night, and you can kind of get that camaraderie, and it's a nice shared experience mm -hmm. uh, for everybody involved. So uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to get back getting back to doing uh, in person because the, uh, the online stuff is, is great. It's tied as over for the last, you know, 14 months now, but we're looking forward yeah. to a little bit of uh, socialization again, you know, that's fantastic. Well, you got, uh, you got, uh, Aniket up there in Toronto. He says, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously to be, to be with the three of you and to be able to, to actually be part of that. And I love the, the, the name fusion. What a cool name as well to be able to show the different styles. Um, it, it, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, before Christian, before we have you introduce yourself really quickly, I just want to point out Martin here says he's watching from the Drakensberg Mountains in South Africa. That's oh, wow. Cool. Okay, like we that. need to put that on our, our list of places to travel to. I've never to. heard of the Drakensberg Mountains, but it sounds yeah. pretty sweet. I know. I'm going to have to check that out. And, and I appreciate Martin mentioning that because, guys, if you are uh, tuning in if from somewhere more unique than Drakensberg, South Africa, actually from anywhere, please let us know in the comments. We always like to see where you guys are watching from. It's always a ton of fun just to know that people are watching from all over the world. So uh, please put your uh, put where you're where you're watching from. With that, Christian, I'm going to hand the mic over to you, my friend. Tell us all about you. Hi, Trevor. Hi, guys. How are you? Nice to be here. Yeah, we appreciate you being here, Christian. So, well, Christian, tell us about your Instagram and your me, website. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> well, for those who don't know me, my name is Christian Cardona. I'm based in Bogota, Colombia, South America. And yes, we are in the north part of the equator. Um, I basically do two types of photography, uh, wedding photography. Uh, most people know me by, by that. And school photography. I do a lot of senior portraits all the year. Um excited because we have this uh, 
plan of doing a workshop with uh, Jay LaPlante family for a lot of time. Uh, I hope I, I think that more than two years in the in the making. <laughs> so right now we finally uh, set up everything to do this. Is that is a very exciting for me, right? Uh, not only for go and meet one of my favorite photographers, but also to share with a lot of people in the States. So it's a very, it's very important for me for to, uh, to do this, this workshop this year. That's awesome, Christian. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this triple camera here to see if we can all squeeze in <laughs> just for a second. I just got to say, I, I, I'm excited for you guys to do this. I truly, I think it would be an absolute uh, joy for anyone. So definitely guys go check it out. Uh, jlaplant.com slash workshops. Uh, you can, I guess right now you guys aren't actually taking registrations, but people can sign up to get kind of an email and let them know when it comes out. Is that right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. They can pre-register right now and anyone who, um, or I mean, not really pre-register, but they can sign up to be, um, to know 24 hours in advance before it goes on sale to the public. So if you sign up for our email list, you get a little bit of an advance notice and, and you can uh, snag a spot before everyone else gets a chance. Yeah. On the 19th, 24 hours ahead. That's awesome. Very cool. I love uh, seeing people I recognize as well. Jeff Tisman over there from Hudson Valley. Hey, He's Jeff. Here. You still coming out to Colorado this year, man? <laughs> right? Get him out there. It'd be awesome. Uh, Thomas is watching from Louisville. Abby's, I believe, is from New Jersey as well, if I'm not mistaken. We got Sasha from Palm Beach. So definitely let us know, guys. With that, I actually, as you guys were talking, again, I'm so excited. I just, I didn't even show you guys' Instagrams. Can I show it really quickly just to make sure everyone can find you in case they're looking? Um, yeah. We got Jesse yeah. and Moira LaPlante. It's just j.laplante.photo. And then Christian Cardona is Christian Cardona AP. Um, so definitely go check them out. And then I showed you Christian's website, which is amazing. I was on the front. And then we got Jesse LaPlante as well, Jesse Moira. Definitely, you guys, you got to go check their stuff out. Again, I'm sure everyone pretty much already knows you guys. But for those who don't, be sure to go check them out. They're amazing. So with that, there's one more comment here. And I think this is a great way to get going. Gabrielle and Nancy said, we're ready to learn. All right, let's do it. <laughs> awesome. So guys, now I know we have images from both of you. So you might have to help me uh, remember whose is whose. But sure. let's jump over to the keynote here. Um, and let's start with this beautiful image. That's fine. Excellent. So actually, and Christian, I believe the way we want to do this is you guys are going to kind of give everyone a walkthrough from start to finish, kind of like bride and groom getting ready all the way to the exit. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Magma throughout the whole wedding day is kind of the idea here. That's fantastic. I love the idea. So I'm going to bring up these uh, keynotes and I'll let you guys talk through them. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. So this is my turn. So <laughs> This was a, a photo in a, one of my favorite weddings. At, uh, this was in Punta Mita in Mexico. Um, this was one of the photos when the bride was getting ready. And we had a lot of time to work with, with, with this girl. Um, actually, this was uh, a house very close to the beach. So I have a lot of nice, uh, nice um, and pretty uh, places to do photos. We have a very nice light, a natural light. But uh, we already worked like one or two hours with, with her. And then I find this that they have a, like a huge, huge, huge uh, window that uh, have like a view to the to part of the beach. So I tried to make a, a reflection and, and the makeup artist was working a lot. And I like the details that they have in the, with the tattoos and all that. So basically what I do is that I use, uh, as you know, Trevor, I use my, the, the, the modifier that I use the most is the, the sphere. Uh -huh. So I basically use uh, a grid and a sphere. Uh, and my, I, I told my assistant, actually, I, you, you can see the, the assistant here. If you see a small line over the palm and at the right side, you see the glasses of my assistant. Actually, you see it uh, in there. Is it? Uh, in, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm yeah. looking for it. I don't see it. Is you see it, 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 you see it over there? there? It's up yeah, the, above the, the palm frond. So basically, the, the the only thing that I have to do later is in, in Photoshop take out the the sphere that of course you see it in the in the initial photo, uh -huh. and that's it. But I basically uh, I, I do my all my exposition. I do it uh, over the dress of the of the bride, and then I underexpose a lot, 
so I can get the reflection on the on the mirror and and on the glass. Sorry, and that's that's it. Only one flash. It's a beautiful shot. And so this was mag sphere, you said. Yeah, this basically in a, in a wedding, I use the sphere. I I can set a ninety percent of the time. I love it. I love it. What a beautiful image, Christian. And I I think um, let's see. I think I can bring up the two of you guys. Let's see if we just move this over a little bit, and that way you guys can talk and and uh, and I'll bring up any questions. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to post those and I can bring them up in the little white box there below. Um, I might have to recenter this a bit. Uh, Christian, I absolutely love this shot. It's it's beautiful. I The only question I had was when you do something like this, do you normally try to expose for the sky first in the reflection? Like, do you shoot that first before you put the flash or do you just kind of do it all at the same time? I I first do, uh, uh, I try to, to expose to the sky and or or maybe if, the, if the, there's too much light on the on the sky, uh -huh. maybe on the plants or whatever I, I where I see Oops. a lot of light and then and then I uh, underexpose, uh, I don't know, two or three steps and then I add the, the flash. Basically, gotcha. it's that like, like in a simple way to tell it, but that, that's a basic way I do it. Gotcha, gotcha. Super, super sweet. I'm going to try to center this up and I'll probably, guys, once I get this centered up, I'll probably just leave it here most of the time if that's cool with you guys. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, beautiful stuff, man. Good, good stuff. Let me just check the comments Thanks really so quickly. We got all kinds of people tuning in. We got Tony from UK. She's saying this is insane. <laughs> Love it. We got Diego from Belize is tuning in as well uh, from uh, there in Central America. We got Derek. Love Derek out there in Tennessee. Uh, and also, uh, before we go to the next image, Jeff wants you to know that, yes, he will be in Colorado. <laughs> in March of, okay, 2022. Got it. We'll okay, be here. Really <laughs> Let's meet I'm up. I'm not sure if we mentioned Roger. He's tuning in from Belgium as well and Sasha from Palm Beach, Florida. Appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. It definitely means a lot. Um, and let your friends know. Let people in the MagMod community know as well that, uh, that you're in here watching. So... Um, excellent. Christian, thank you so much for sharing that image. So I gave everyone a little thank sneak you. peek. I accidentally clicked on the next photo already. Um, here's this next one. I believe this is Jesse Mora, right? Is this you guys' image? It is. Yeah. And what just occurred to me there is that I asked Christian to submit some of his best photos for this. And I should have asked him to submit like second or third or fourth best because <laughs> it would make us look better by comparison. So now, cause he's a, he's a tough act to follow. Right. Uh, he but is. so it's, we're going kind of chronologically through the wedding day here that was getting ready. This is first look now. And we shot this essentially the exact same way that uh, that Christian showed that last one where, um, you know, we have the groom outdoors and we have the bride inside the atrium uh, of this hotel and she's walking out for the first look. Uh, and normally shooting the first look, we just go straight ambient light to kind of capture the moment. Um, uh -huh. But this one, we were like, maybe we could try to do something a little more creative. And as she's walking, you know, up to that uh, glass uh, window there through the atrium, maybe we could try to light her for a couple uh, and see how that kind of turns out. Uh, from my perspective outside, I couldn't see her at all because it's much darker in there. Uh, yeah. So I just basically focused on the reflection of the city street behind me uh, and dialed my aperture way down to like F16 or something to give myself more wow. leeway with the depth of field. And Mora just kind of tracked her inside the atrium, uh, walking backwards with her, lighting her from camera left uh, nine o'clock with a grid and a sphere, the same modifiers uh, that Christian mentioned. He did that last one. So the reflection shots can be tough because um, it was more evident in Christian's, but you really want to place the subject in the dark part of the reflection uh, because when you light them in the dark part, then they show up through the reflection better. Uh, you know, in his, if he had positioned the, the bride in the sky, she wouldn't have shown up as much. So that, that's kind of definitely the key here, I think. Yeah, I love this. I, you know, the hardest thing about something like this is the the, the focus part um, and the fact that you dial down your aperture so much just to make sure that she was in focus. And then I guess the second hardest part that I think about is the communication. Like, how were you and Moira communicating with each other in order to get this? Because I imagine this was a pretty, f I mean, this is a, a, a scene that's kind of flowing. It's kind of happening, right? Um, right. You know, it looks like yeah. she's prepping to go out and do that first look. So how did you guys communicate that ahead of time? And, you know, to tell Moira like, Hey, you know, this, it was, it Jesse, you shot this and Moira was lighting her. Is that right? Yeah. And so that 
we do a lot of communication, not only between ourselves, but with the couple ahead of time to set them up. And you'll notice that it's the bride walking, carrying her own dress. She's not being followed by a gaggle of bridesmaids who are helping because we knew we wanted a photo like this. And so, you know, not only have we talked through the process of doing it and the fact that I'm not carrying her dress, I'm going to like just hand it to her, be like, this is a self-contained unit. You're going to walk up there, um, you know, tell her exactly what she needs to do when she needs to do it. And then that gives me this chance to just focus on lighting and Jesse can just focus on what's going on. And so, um, you know, we scouted this, I think the morning before we started uh, doing the getting ready. And so we already had this in our head so that when we got to the first look, we knew that we could just go and do it and let it really unfold organically without doing too much. You know, like we didn't want her to come back and be like, okay, let's do it again. That really takes them out of the moment. If I remember correctly, um, the lighting her, I think may have been sort of like a game time decision though. Uh, so what I'll do is, you know, I got the, the groom into place and then Maura comes down with the bride and then she comes to check to make sure that I'm ready to go. And then I probably just said, Hey, Maura, you know, uh, pop a, a grid and a sphere on a flash and, and light her as she's walking across the lobby. So then Maura knows kind of automatically what she's going to do in that, in that situation. Gosh, it's so pretty you guys. Um, so I, I, I feel like one of the themes and I, I'm going to bring up the three cameras here. So I apologize, Jesse Moore, you guys have to get super close again. <laughs> <That close>. um, <laughs> but I feel like one of the themes that both you or, or I should say all of you guys, uh, and especially in even these last two photos, is this idea, this this pre visualization, like you were saying that you kind of you saw this kind of ahead of time. Granted, the, the lighting might have been a, a game day decision, but you walked into it and you said, OK, this is a good place. Is there any tips for that you guys would give anyone, you know, starting out in wedding photography? You know, it's kind of like, hey, if you're planning the day, if you're kind of trying to see the day, because uh, I can't think of any any way of like teaching that. I'm trying to think, is there a way to teach that or kind of think about that? Or is there anything you guys do to kind of help you to pre-visualize it? I, that's a very philosophical question that I absolutely <laughs> yes. love, Trevor. Um, and I think the shortest answer that's also the least fulfilling is that we just keep ourselves open to inspiration in all aspects of our life. You know, whether we're out having dinner and we notice like a really cool reflection or we're watching a movie or we're out for a hike. We just want we kind of keep all that stuff in the back of our head so that when it's when it's go time, it's a lot easier for us to recognize something that we know we can work with. Yeah, it happens way in advance. I think it's just, um, you know, practicing, exercising that part of your brain where you're always kind of looking at light. And for, for us, we can never turn that off, right? We wish we could turn that off sometimes so that we can like just go on a hike and, and be present and enjoy it. But we're always like, oh, look at that up the way the light's coming through and how yeah, yeah. we could compose this with that. Um, you know, so it's good for, so then when you go to the wedding day, it's all of that is kind of already worked into your psyche. So you don't really have to think about it um, at the front of your mind. It's it's almost like a rote uh, thing that just exists within you. So just, yeah, practice uh, seeing light in your day to day, whether you're out to eat or on a hike or driving your car uh, or or whatever, right? Watching movies, we take inspiration from lots of different sources and you know, it will become part of your creative lexicon, I think. Yeah, I, I think also that this, you, you, you said it the right way, but I also will add that, well, first you have to try to get out of your head the technical stuff the day of the, of the, of the, of the wedding or each work because you're more concerned about uh, fixing things in your camera than creating something with, with it. So the first thing that I try to tell everyone is that uh, you have to really learn how to, to, to use your camera and what you can do with, with, the, with all the stuff that you, that you have when you're going to do a, a, a photo. So when you're writing in, in, the, in the wedding or in the session or whatever you're doing, you're more concerned on, on, on creating the, that idea that you have on your mind. Of course, other thing that I try to, to do that helped me a lot to see in a different way is try to see what in the opposite way the the guests are seeing the 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 the, the wedding or or how they are seen normally they have like you know they're like this in the same position seeing or trying to get the same photo so mm -hmm. uh, if you're just trying to see in a different perspective from them you're already doing the the, the homework like you're doing the photo that no one's no one no one else have so that mm -hmm. will help you at least to see it in a different way in a different perspective 
than everyone else because uh, that's why you're you're hired because you're you have to be the that different view from everyone else so that's something that helped me a lot to see uh, try to see what what they are seeing to go and, and do the opposite thing so that's that's going to give me some pretty nice ideas if i'm kind of blocked with i don't know what to do yeah i love that that's a great um, so, point. I, just to follow up on that real quickly, if I could, yeah, um, a quick please. way of doing that too is to shoot at the spectrums of the focal length. So like the human eye sees at around 50, 55 millimeters. So just shoot at 14, shoot, shoot at 200, lie on the floor, get hot, you know, get up in the rafters, get really close, get really far. All those extremes force your eye into a new perspective that uh, all those guests standing there shooting at eye level with a 50 millimeter camera, right, aren't going to see you. Yeah. And that, that is the way that we are going to keep ourselves from becoming obsolete, the better and better cell phone cameras get. All right. Uh, that's our biggest competition, isn't it? Cell phones. You know, like like the fact that uh, they're, they're all they can do, you know, amazing photography and stuff now. So it's, it's being different. Um, yeah. I got to say real quick, I, I, I remember, I think I've shared this story once before, but uh, when one of my kids was born, I was lying in the hospital there and, and my wife was sleeping and I was holding the baby and I was so excited. I think, you know, he or she, I can't remember which child of my six it was, but, um, <laughs> but, but I, was, I was holding the baby and I remember just looking and, and, and turning and I was like, the light from the hospital was lighting up the nose and I was like, oh, you know, there's a paramount light and oh, there's side light. And I'm like, look at it. And I, and I imagine it, it reminded me of that story, Jesse Moore, when you guys were talking about hiking and how you like see all these things everywhere. Isn't that the worst when you're trying to watch a movie? And it's like you're just constantly yep. like you're analyzing yep. the movie, the lighting and the composition and everything else. But I drive more crazy. I drive people crazy. Nobody can watch a movie because I'll pause it just to like figure out where they put all the lights. I'll rewind. And everybody else is just like. All we care about is the story. Who cares about the photography, man? Right? Yeah, so, he'll, he'll watch the scene like three times and then turn to me and be like, "What just happened yeah, there?" I still won't I'm know. Like, what were you? What were you looking at? I still won't know what the plot of the movie is because I just spent the whole time looking at how they shot it. Every movie is like Tenet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, there's a couple more uh, comments here. Uh, K, uh, K. M. Penny, great point. Knowing your camera is key, then the magic will flow. Practice, practice, practice. I like to think the camera is kind of like a. I, I mean, I'm terrible with a piano, but like a you know, like a pianist playing the piano. If you know how to use the camera and you can play, then they, they can sit down and do anything pretty much any time, right? Uh, Claudia says it's great. Jonathan says 100% agree. So appreciate it. again you guys watching, and I appreciate all those comments. Um, so let's should we jump back into the images, you guys? Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Let Do me it. go back over here. And uh, so we got through this one. So this is the the getting ready. So we got the getting ready here. And then we got the coming out doing the first look. And then the next thing is the ceremony. And I believe this is you, Christian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this this was a big, uh, big wedding at Cartagena. Uh, normally, I use only two flashes. But as you see, there's a uh, there's obviously two flashes there that you can see it on the on the on the shot. But I normally have one that is on, on a tripod and another one that have my assistant. So I have like a mobile light all over the place. Uh, you were asking how I communicate with my assistant. You, you, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, I told my students that I, that I use a Mac hand. That is this. <laughs> what I do is that uh, I, don't, I, I can't scream in the middle of the, of the ceremony because I'm going to be kicked out of the of there. So... Normally, what I told my my assistant is that he imagined that this is the front of the, of the flash, and whatever I how how I move my hand is the same way he have to put it uh, over mm -hmm. someone kind, uh, put it uh, a little bit lower. But he is, is you know like the baseball like in baseball that they do a lot of things with their hands. I yeah. do basically the same thing with my with my hand. So uh, what I do is in that in that wedding, what I do is that I normally, as I told you, I, I take two flashes, but in this time I take three because I have a lot of a, a lot of places and a lot of um, flowers all around them. So mm -hmm. one flash give me a little bit of shadow over the room. So I have to put two. Normally I do. I, I do. Not, I didn't do that. So basically um, more of the times in, in the ceremony, what I do is like a triangle uh, setup uh two two flashes that, that as you see uh, there uh, uh -huh. 45 degrees uh, uh, um, one to the groom and one to the bride and another one that is behind the the the, um, the couple as you see uh, there's a lot of light on the dress of the of the bride 
So normally what I do is that my my assistant is behind all that. Uh, you know, uh, you see a girl that is like in a black dress. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, she, like, right, like right doing like this. Right. Well, uh -huh. <laughs> my assistant is doing basically the same thing, but with the with the pole. So he is moving all over the place. When I have to go for, and do this uh, back the back shoots uh, at, at the end of the alley, I go and go to the back of the of the church, and then I, I told them that put uh, light uh, behind them. So that's the, that's the thing that I do all the time. So he is moving all around all the all the. Um, all the ceremony and I shoot with the free flashes with again with the spheres. Nice, nice. I love it. So I, I'm curious, Christian, in, in a shot like this, do you ever find that the the flashes because um, you have these flashes pointed kind of towards the guests, right? They're kind of like towards the bride and groom, kind of giving them that rim light. Do you ever feel like like sometimes I'm I, I think consciously I'm kind of like, oh, I don't want to I don't want to flash the guests too often. Do you ever find, do you ever think about that? Or do you just kind of like, hey, I'm lighting them up in this certain way? Or do you, maybe the other question is, do you use flash the entire wedding or do you only use it for certain shots? I I use flash most of the time. But, uh, yeah. most, of, most of the time I use only one flash actually. But yeah. uh, this was a difficult venue because they were like in a, like in a higher place than everyone else. Yeah. And my, and my tripods, they were not so high. So I, I, I was forced to put them uh, on that place, but they were too close to, uh, to them. So normally I put it a, a little a little bit more far away from them. Uh, so you will not able to see it or, or contaminate, for example, the flowers there or something like that. Yeah. But this was a very hard place because of that, because they, they were the, the altar. The, what's the name of that? The altar or the the uh, place where, where, yep. where, yep. where yep. the ceremony was? What, what, sorry? You got it. It's the altar. It. Altar, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the altar were, was very, very small, so there was no place to put the the the, the tripod. So they're normally more far away from them. But this was actually a, that's why I have to put it that way in this in this case. But yeah, at the end, I actually kind of like the the light points that 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 do the, the flash over there. So I that's why I, I leave it there. That's beautiful, man. Good stuff. Love it. And I love how you expose down so you could get that, uh, that light from those, uh, the, the ceiling lights or I don't, I, those aren't chandeliers. I don't know what you would call those, but they're absolutely beautiful. Stunning. Yeah, it was stunning, a very stunning. pretty, uh, a very pretty wedding that, that day. You got uh, Diego saying you're the boss. <laughs> Thanks so much, Diego. <laughs> All right. Here comes uh, boss number two here. We got another shot. We got, I think this is a ceremony we'll as well. Happily be, we'll happily <laughs> take boss number two. Yeah, vice president. Um, no, Jesse Moore. Yeah, so, about so in a, typically in Colorado, wedding receptions or uh, wedding ceremonies are outdoors. So we don't use a ton of off-camera flash. But uh, occasionally we'll run into one of these situations where, um, you know, it's it's indoors, but we also want to show the detail through the window, which is about four to five stops brighter than what is inside, right? So either we have to kind of expose uh, for the couple if we're shooting ambient and blow out that background, uh, or we expose for the we exposed somewhere kind of in between and try to salvage it and post. Uh, so what we like to do in these situations is uh, bring in two lights and set them up uh, kind of at the end of the, at the row of guests, right? So the lights, uh, are at about nine o'clock and three o'clock here, uh, just out of frame to camera right and to camera left, situated right along kind of the back row of guests. And uh, the light on the right is feathered, meaning that we're pointing it over to the left of the bride. Uh -huh. And the light that's on the left, we're pointing over to the right uh, of the groom, which gives an, a little bit of a nicer spread. And each of those lights also have a mag sphere on them, uh, which sort of further smooths the light a little bit and kind of reduces those uh, specular highlights. So by bringing in those lights now, we're able to uh, retain detail uh, in that really bright background, but we're also able to light up uh, the couple and the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and even some of the guests there. Gotcha. Beautiful stuff. Um, oh, I don't know why. Oh, we got my, <laughs> it's like, looks like it swapped with Christian for some reason. All right. <laughs> well, um, well, yeah, Christian, we'll have to get you like back. Like I lost signal for a second. So no, no, you. that's okay. 
I, I just feel bad that uh, people have to look at me and not you because you're much better looking. Uh, we'll, 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 switch it over. <laughs> we'll figure out how to get it back. Um, and as Diego said, you're the boss. So I like that. Um, you, you know what? It's so great about this one and Jesse Moore. And I and, and it's funny. I think it was Sean Laura or somebody out there in Colorado as well. You guys have such amazing landscapes. And when you when you get choose a ceremony spot like this, your eyes see it. And the people are like, wow, that looks amazing. But there's no cell phone that can capture something like this where you can actually, you know, grab it unless you put light on them. Like you were saying, like it, you have to have that light to really pull them out. And and your natural light photographer, somebody that does not use flash is going to struggle with that as well. Um, so this is one. I love these photos because they look simple, but they are so hard to actually produce correctly. So, yeah, beautiful stuff. Yeah, and you, hit, you hit on an interesting point there, Trevor, too, where. Um, you know, especially in Colorado, when our couples pick their location, they pick it for the view most often than not. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to incorporate that, that's an important part of the wedding day for them, almost as important as, you know, the dress or the rings yeah. or the shoes or any of those other details. And so we want to be able to represent that, um, you know, the way that they see it and the way that they experience it. Yeah. And one more, I want to go back to a point, uh, you know, you asked Christian about, does he ever worry that the flash is going to, you know, disrupt the, the guests or anything yeah. like that? And um, so the first thing that jumps into mind there is that first and foremost, we're shooting for uh, the, the couple, mm -hmm. right? They're the ones that have hired us. We kind of educate them ahead of time and let them know that in order to get this style of photos that, that they really want and that they're paying us a lot of money for, uh, we, we might have to use flash in these situations. And, you know, if a couple of guests are upset by it, it they can deal with it, right? It's mm -hmm. only going to be like a few minutes and the photos are going to last forever for the couple, yeah. right? So, and, yeah. and it's for, the photos are also for uh, posterity, right? Future generations, uh, their kids, their grandkids who aren't able to be there and experience it on their own. Um, so, you know, we, you can't please everyone all the time, right? Somebody, if someone gets upset, there's really nothing you can do about that. You just kind of have to be as respectful as you can uh, while simultaneously, you know, making the best photos you can for the couple. So it's a tricky balance, but it's one that we we have to strike as wedding photographers. I, I appreciate you bringing that up because it's so true that that uh, they, they do pay you to produce that. And so you, you certainly want to make sure that you're not letting that mental, you know, oh, I hope I'm not offending somebody or doing something like mm -hmm. you, you want to make right. sure that you are. Um, producing the type of images that they expect from you. So beautiful stuff, you guys. I also want to add to that, that uh, actually today I was talking with, with a bride and she was mm -hmm. uh, asking me if all the photos are going to be like with colors and, you know, extremely creative and also, also and, and, and I actually told her that that was like the 5% of all the photos that I'm going to get, uh, get to her because uh, as, as you told, as you, as you tell guys, uh, as you said, guys, um the basic responsibility is to do the the a perfect coverage of the wedding and that that of course means that you also have to to show what happens as, as it happens not everything has to be like in a creative way i i can't imagine myself doing a i i don't know a gel thing in a in the middle of a ceremony you know like uh, putting a red gel over the over the pastor or something like that i don't know <laughs> i will never do that something like that but they want to see how what, what they pay for they want to see their decoration they want to see the the destination they choose for their wedding so mm -hmm. that's why that that photo that looks more simple uh, maybe are the ones that more that, that the most important for the for for them uh, so that's why you also have to do it in a perfect way so not most of the people think that all my weddings are just colors and 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 they're too to to contrast but no actually they're Actually, I post a photo uh, two days before of a wedding, and it's a very simple w photo, but it's a really good moment of the end of the ceremony. And a lot of people, that's funny because a lot of people write me like, oh, you changed your style. And no, it's actually, <laughs> it's what I do all the time. <laughs> it's what I do all the time, but it's, it's, I, I don't pull that type of photo all the time. It's, the, it's a big difference. Now, now I'm super interested in knowing which photo is it. <laughs> is this on Instagram? <laughs> Yeah, it's actually an Instagram. It's the last one that I posted. Oh, the very last one of the couple. Yeah, that's a very simple photo, but but that's that's the things that I normally do in in, in weddings. Right? You have to uh -huh. shoot this type of photos also. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you definitely. I mean, we, I mean, it is like, you know, for a ceremony like that, I'm just trying to get one really cool creative shot. And the other 99% is moment driven photojournalism, showing the reality of the day, showing the emotion uh, and the relationships between people, that all that stuff is incredibly important. It's just that when we curate for our website and uh, social media and things like that, we're trying to project a very specific style, but it's definitely not yeah. representative of uh, what an entire wedding shoot looks like by any yeah. means. I love that, guys. I, I actually appreciate the, the appreciate the fact that you guys are bringing this up because I think this is something that you have to be vulnerable to be able to share kind of like it's kind of like hey it's not like every single photograph is going to look like this one right um right. so i appreciate you guys sharing that i think it's really helpful for everybody else that looks up to everybody and you know that people like yourselves um and thinks you know i want every single one of my images to look like that and it's like no you shoot for five percent of those images to you know or whatever it is that number um Good stuff, you guys. And by the way, we have a few more images, so don't go away yet, guys. But I do want to, it's funny, this sounds like a radio commercial or something, but we're talking about all this good <laughs> stuff. And I and I want to just bring this up one more time um, for those who might be joining us that weren't at the beginning. Uh, Christian and Jesse and Moira are actually doing a workshop uh, coming up in November. Uh, they're going to be putting this out there on May 20th. So if you want early access to be able to be, be part of that before everyone else gets a chance to definitely go on their website, jlaplant.com slash workshops and get your early access. Uh, Jesse and Christian, I expect a check for all this, uh, promotion that I'm, I'm, I'm making for you guys. No, yeah. That's, kidding. it's kind of like when you're watching a pot or listening to a podcast and yes. halfway through they're, they're like, they give you a Tesla ad or something, you know, you know? We need to talk about our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> we should, I need an affiliate code. Use, use yeah, code absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You, well, we have the magma. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's switch. No, that. but but honestly, guys, I actually I do I do want people to, to know about this because it is going to be quite a treat. I, I certainly hope I could even be part of it. So I might have to just drive up there and, and visit Denver November 2nd through the yeah. 4th. So. And during the workshop on day two, we're going to do a whole mock wedding shoot where we have an actual couple and we're going to have them go through the motions of the entire wedding day from getting ready to that final send off toast, dance party, ceremony, all that stuff. We're going to uh, demo how we light all those different parts of the day. That's awesome. I, I hope you do what Christian does on his on workshops I've seen in the past where he like gives them like a modifier and says you got two minutes to create something or whatever. Yes. <laughs> what is that, Christian? He always you like Yeah, you put everyone my students hate me, well, hate me, but then they, they start to understand what I mean with that. Uh, is, I, the, the thing there is that I try to put them in a real situation, you know, like yeah. a, 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 a very difficult spot to do a photo. Uh, with no time, you know, when you have a planner behind you and they tell they telling you that you don't have any time that you have to go to another place. So I try to 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 put in in the worst situation possible my students. Yeah. So uh, normally that they are they are suffering, but then I, they understand all the all the <laughs> of all that. That's awesome. That's awesome. My, Michael's saying he's bummed he can't make it. He probably has a shoot. He's an awesome photographer out there. But that's all right, Michael. You can head out to Colorado and go snowboarding with him someday. Actually, Jesse and Maura, you guys are skiers, though, right? You guys ski over snowboarding, right? Yeah, so we'll, yes. we'll be a little faster than Michael, of course, <laughs> right? Because we're on skis. <laughs> but we don't, we don't mind hanging out. Yeah, for sure. I love it. And Kyle's asking if you need somebody to come show off some uh, dance moves at that mock wedding. <laughs> we might. Uh, absolutely. Yes, yeah, but you'll have to bring your dog with you. Yeah, bring your dog yeah. and uh, we'll put on some tunes and you can dance for 45 <laughs> minutes straight I love while it. we light you. <laughs> so cool all right let's uh before we jump into the next shot claudia also just want to mention she says this is what really matters in photography uh not the dance moves um but freezing important moments in life that people will enjoy a lifetime absolutely 100 percent agree with you um very cool and then rob is saying what a perfect combo of photographers for a lighting workshop bum we can't make this one either uh where to go find info steven go check out um jlaplant.com slash workshops and use code daily. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> Michael's saying you're not going to beat him. But all right, let's jump back into the photos. <laughs> um, we got, uh, so we did this one here. Let's go over to the next shot. And I think we're moving on now. So now we're going to the bride and groom. And I believe there is a BTS. And if it's okay, Christian, I am going to bring this up first. As you explain it, and then we'll go back to the yeah, other shot, okay? No, no, this one's actually... Uh, yeah, this one's ours. Oh, is that you guys? Yeah, this one's ours. That's, yeah, Christian's that's like, I'll take it. 
coming out from the side <laughs> of the photo right That's there. That's me holding the light on the right hand side there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Sorry. So Jesse and Maura, tell us about this one. Yeah. So as you can tell from the behind the scenes um, for this one, we did use the mag box. And um, on the mag box, we had the soft fabric diffuser. Um, this is a little bit different. Like most of the time we have the focus diffuser on the mag box because we are shooting portraits in the middle of the day with that really intense Colorado sun. And we love the focus diffuser because it really helps just amplify the light when we're working with that midday sun. But this photo was at sunset, so we weren't battling as much ambient light. Um, so we were able to use the soft fabric diffuser instead. Um, but you'll notice like a big part of our photos is when we work with the light, we, we try to get it as off axis from the camera as possible. Um, and that's not just horizontally, but also vertically. And that's why Jesse's, you know, like holding it holding up it like, like, a, a like a boom mic. Like a boom mic. Yeah. Um, because the more off axis we get. So when you have the light coming directly from the camera, you're going to get that really flat kind of boring light. And so if we get it off axis, not only horizontally, but also vertically, we get more of a dramatic, like three dimensional look because there's, um, you know, more gradation between the light and the, the shadow. Love that. Did you, oh, no, I, thought go you're ahead. Sorry. I thought you were done. <laughs> no. And it, so the, the last thing that I want to point out about this one, too, is um, like Jesse mentioned in the ceremony shot that we talked about just uh, previous to this one is we feather the light. Um, we're always doing that. And, and like you said, that's we're, we're not pointing the light directly at the subject because that sometimes comes up with too much of a flashy look. Rather, we want it to, in this one, just kind of skim down the front of the couple. And what that's going to do is give it sort of an ethereal, like painterly look instead of just that like really bright, flashy, almost like green screen kind of look. Yeah, and the one little part that I want to add here is uh, you can see that the lighting in this shot, the behind the scenes, and then the final shot is completely different, but it's really only... Uh, maybe a difference of a couple millimeters with that angle. So when we're lighting, when I'm holding the, the softbox up like that, I'm moving it around, I'm tilting it down, up, feathering less, more right at them, you know? So uh, so the point is like, if, you, if you're not getting the look that you want in these type of shots right off the bat, you're probably not that far off, right? You mm -hmm. probably only need to move the light a couple of millimeters uh, and it's gonna look a lot better, right? So that's why we, you can see I'm holding up there, I'm kind of feathering, <laughs> I'm moving it around. Um, and in the final, as a result of that, looks uh, a lot better than than that BTS shot. I love that. So, guys, for those who aren't familiar, feathering means what? What's the easiest way to explain feathering? Yep. So instead of pointing the softbox directly at the couple's faces, I'm basically pointing it in front of them. I'm aiming at the ground, maybe 12 inches in front of where they're standing, so that it's just the edge of the light that's coming down and, and skimming through and, and catching them. Uh, this way it makes it like more, said, it makes it look a little bit more painterly. Uh, it, you'll see in that final shot, a little more uh, three-dimensional, a little more um, dynamic in the transition from lights to darks, as opposed to if you're just standing there kind of pointing it at them at eye level, hitting them directly with the flash, it can sometimes feel a little bit flat or feel a little bit, uh, you know, like Morris said, a little bit too flashy as opposed yeah. to, um, you know, a little bit, you get more subtlety, I think, with the with the feathering. And for the big group shots, like in that ceremony, feathering two lights just kind of gives you a nicer, even uh, light spread. Love it. Thank you for the explanation. Um, yeah. Christian, this might be a good question for, well, for both of you, um, but but Christian, I know you use the MagSphere a lot. So Claudia was asking, yeah. can I achieve this look with the MagSphere? What would you well, guys tell that, Claudia? Uh, I think you, you, you can do it. But uh, of course, the, the max fear gives you a, a harder light. So normally, uh, when you, when you want to be a like a softer a softer transition, uh, you need a bigger a, a bigger box, and the max box is perfect for that. Uh, but you can do it. Uh, remember that the sphere actually what it what what does is that spread light everywhere, right? So uh, you you normally what you can do is not to to point it. Totally di directly to the to the couple, but uh, to put it a little bit like in a, um, help me with that word, like in a, um, uh, a diagonal position. Okay. So you you will <laughs> able to, to to reach a little so a little bit of a softer light from the from the side of the of the sphere and not from the front. So maybe that will help. And I you, I, I do that a lot, not pointing uh, totally directly the, the the sphere, but a little bit uh, like to the ground. 
So you basically what are you are using is the, the 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 light from the side of the of the sphere and not that direct light from the from the center of the of the sphere. So yeah. maybe you can softer a little bit of the light, but of course if you want a light a uh, softer light, you have to use a bigger modifier. Bigger box, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we use this this technique often, um, and this was a, a rare occasion where we did get to use the the mag box because oftentimes when we are working in the mountains um, it's really windy and if i try to use the mag box at the top of a mountain i'm going to get blown away so oftentimes we are using the sphere to achieve a similar look like yeah. christian mentioned the light's not going to be nearly as soft or i mean it's not going to be as soft as the mag sphere yeah. mag sphere is a little bit harsher but we have achieved a similar look with the mag sphere. yeah for me what the mag sphere is great for is sort of reducing those specular highlights mm -hmm. and it also kind of smoothing the gradation from light to dark at the edges yeah. of the light right yeah. as opposed to if you just have that bare flash it's going to be a real hard bright spot in the middle and it's going to be a stark contrast between light and dark at the edge whereas the mag sphere kind of smooths that out uh, but doesn't necessarily add a ton of softness because it is a, a small modifier whereas the mag box is larger so that's where softness comes from is the, the relative size of the light source to the, yep. the subject that's why we'll also hold it really really close to them uh, the closer you hold the box in to the subject the softer that light's going to be the further away that light source is the smaller the light source will be relative to the subject and then yeah. you'll sort of lose some of that softness good stuff love it you guys um thank you for answering that question and then uh michael was asking uh, did you light in front or directly overhead and i think based on that image there it looks like it was just it was uh kind of i mean the answer is both yeah. um yeah. and also we, we get a lot of not, different looks we're not entirely sure because like jesse was mentioning it's the the difference between the almost perfect photo and the perfect photo is a matter of millimeters, which is why mm -hmm. we're constantly moving the light around, you know, working with the couple on very fluid posing, um, you know, in hopes of getting, having those two things align and getting that absolute perfect. Yeah. Photo. We probably took 75 frames and we even passed the, uh, the camera and the light back and forth mm -hmm. too. Right. Because it's like, yeah. I have about six inches on Mora. So maybe <laughs> we wanted to get that light up there a little higher and then we switched yeah. and I grabbed the light, you know, so you take That's as many cool. slight variations as you can and pick out the best one focal length that. would have been uh, 14 i think on this mm -hmm. yeah nice very cool mauricio he's an amazing photographer out of costa rica he says trevor you got serious heavyweight mm -hmm. on the show today love christian and jesse moria's work for sure i totally agree yeah. with you mauricio it's actually kind of fun because i get to play the the behind the scenes wizard like controlling <laughs> the show but nobody can see me like right now i have my shirt off i'm relaxing <laughs> 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 Well, we're not wearing pants, so we're all, we're all, set. Well, we're all the same then. Um, hey, Anika, before we go on to the next image, Anika has a question. So when you use a mag box with the focus diffuser, the mag box, uh, should we also feather it? That's a good question because the, the mag or the focus diffuser is going to give you more of a gridded light. So the feathering is not going to work quite as well. Um, mm -hmm. That would be my my take. That being said, when you feather the light, you're also getting that light bouncing off the edge of the soft box and down. Um, so that can kind of help with the wrapping it around, uh, any input on that, you guys? Yeah, well, for this shot, we are using the soft fabric diffuser. So it's a little more spread and it's a little easier to, to feather. Uh, with that focus diffuser, we're usually using that during the middle of the day when there's a ton of ambient light to, to yeah. combat because it directs the light and it sort of intensifies it a bit. Um, but yeah, you can still feather. It's just mm -hmm. going to be, you're going to have to be a little bit more precise, I think, yeah. because you don't have as much leeway at the edges. Yeah. And we, we will feather that to a certain degree, you know, even if it's just, um, you know, I'm lighting and I'm standing closer to the groom, I'll point it at the bride instead of directly at the groom. So that's still a, a way of feathering and just getting a little bit of a nicer light. Love it. Good deal. So let's go on to this shot. All right, Christian. Yeah, well, this was a tricky one because on. we were in. This was in Cartagena. This was a, uh, like in the like in a, uh, I don't know, like like a small room that they have in a restaurant, like in a wine wine room, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that uh, the, the the ceiling have that like uh, oval oval form. So yeah, uh, when I, when I get there, there was very a, a very dark spot and so it's very hard to 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 try to do this this type of, of photo because there was not not much space i was using a 1635 to do to, to, to do this this one so the first attempt I, I was trying to to get the ambient light because as you see there's a kind of candles over the over them 
but there was not so much light. Uh, so I, I bring uh, the gels and then I use my phone. The only thing that I do later in post-production is that I, I get a little bit of the center of the photo. So I, like I mix two photos, one with the light, with the flash, and another one without one, without it. So mm. basically, for, first, I can get out the flash, uh, but second, I can get that uh, that low part of the photo so I can mix it uh, very well. But uh, that actually are two photos, uh, the one with, with the flash and the gel, and another one with the flash with uh, with the without the, the key light and with the gel behind them. So I can then mix them and get out the flash of, of the scene because there was a very, very small place, as, as I told you, and I used my phone just to get out all the chairs and all the things that I were, that, that were there uh, in the middle of them. But, uh, and also there was a lot of heat down there. So we have to do that photo like in two minutes because there was no oxygen out there. <laughs> I, Christian, I'm just kind of laughing here to myself. I'm thinking, man, I would love to see a, a, a BTS of this. I'd love to see a, like an in-room shot to try to imagine what it looked like. Um, yeah, a lot of people ask me of BTS, but uh, normally on weddings, I, I just like I disconnect myself from the world and I just forgot my cell phone and everything. And that and actually when I when we do this photo, my assistant was the one that told me, "Oh, you 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 have to you have to do a uh, behind the scenes." But we already have to go because we are sweating a lot and they were suffocated. <laughs> yeah. So we have to go out, get out of there. But I all the time I forgot to do BTS because I normally I'm very focused on doing my work. So yeah. uh, when I end all the work, I oh I, I forgot to do this or that. But this is just because I I get the one hundred percent of my attention to my clients all the time. Yeah. I, I know I feel the same way, man. I, 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 and I'll look at a wedding later on and I'll think, oh, man, I should have grabbed a BTS of that or I should have grabbed, you know, something to show it. Yes. Um, oftentimes, not only do I disconnect, but sometimes when I'm shooting a wedding, I'm like, man, I suck. Like, I, I, I shouldn't be out here. Why are they paying That's the problem of doing that. <laughs> no. And, so anyhow, all right. Um, I'm like the motivational speaker here today. All right. Uh, Christian. I think this is yours, right? Yeah. So we're yeah, moving on to the, the reception. Yeah, and the reception basically, I, it depends on the on the <laughs> on the room or, or the location. Uh, I will put the, the the flashes in different ways, but normally here in Colombia, there's uh, they they give a lot of attention to the to the party. So normally they put uh, orchestra or they put a DJ or something like that on the on the back of the of the of the ballroom. So uh, I have a lot of light from the DJ or from the or from the setting of the orchestra. So I use that as, as the backlight. But anyway, uh, most of the time I put uh, two flashes at the side of the of the dance floor. So I have light every coming everywhere. And the other one is the one that have my my assistant with uh, with the pole. That always the mission of of him is to search for the face of the bride or the groom or the one that I'm hitting with the light. So normally as at the ceremony I have three flashes or two in a cross light or in a triangle uh, setup. But uh, that's the way I work all the time. If I don't have that much light that I have, like in this one, uh, I normally put gels to that to that flashes all, uh, on the backlight. So that helped me as, a, as, as the DJ light, it helped me fake that type of lights. So that's, that's the things that I do here. And uh, again, with the spheres, I work with the sphere all the day, as you see here. Yeah, this is beautiful. Man, and I and I love the colors and the the popping there. Um, outside of lighting, what do you normally do in Lightroom in order to make your colors so bold and and you know and make them really pop? Are you using a particular oh. preset, or are you just is there a slider that you like the you know vibrance, or what do you what are you normally using? The a a uh, sorry if I don't say it correctly. The HSL um, uh huh hue uh, saturation luminous slider. Slider. That's uh -huh. the one where I force a lot of color there, but in a specific way. So like, I don't want to move yeah. all the greens or in all the photo, or all the skin tones. I, I use it like lo locally uh, with each color. Love it. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Love Thank it, you. love it, love it. So good, man. Um, let's go to this shot. I think this is- All right, really home, home stretch here. <laughs> this is the last yeah. one. <laughs> Nice. Uh, yeah, so this is send off. This was a 100 degree day 
uh, in August in Boulder. So everyone was, you know, sweating all day and, and, uh, we decided to do a, a water spray send off. We had squirt guns and a few of the guests had uh, bottles of Perrier back there, which they could <laughs> shake up and kind of spray like champagne, but it's not sticky like champagne, uh, or Pellegrino. Either one works, right? So, uh, to light this, and there was only maybe it looks like 10 to 12 people left at the very end of the party to kind of do this. So we were able to put a stationary light on a stand uh, at 12 o'clock behind the bride and groom as they're leaving to backlight the spray uh, with a blue creative gel. Uh, and then Mora tracked uh, the couple as they're walking through uh, the line of guests with uh, another light on a pole uh, with, I believe, a grid and a sphere. Again, the grid to kind of narrow the light just to focus it right on them uh, and the sphere to sort of smooth the gradation, uh, the fall off at the edges, the transition from from, from light to dark. Uh, if we have a you know a ton of people left at the end of the night for something like this, then we need uh, someone following them with that backlight because as we get too far away from it, it's going to get darker and darker and darker. Uh, but in this one, we were able to fortunately just put it on a stand since it was only about a 10, 10 foot walk that they had to do. Nice. So these were the only guests that didn't melt from the day, huh? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Everybody, everybody else went home to take a cold shower, I think. <laughs> So, so I, the question then, um, do you always use gels behind them to light up, whether it be sparklers, water, uh, or was this a situation where you said, oh, they're shooting water, so we want to use a blue creative gel? Like, is that something common that you do a lot? Yeah, just to, you know, create more visual interest with color contrast. Okay. Um, Another way of doing it would have been to maybe use a CTO gel on our key light and then just shift our white balance down to, you know, maybe 3000 or so, and which would also change that backlight to, to blue. So there's a lot of different ways of doing it, but yeah. yeah, whenever possible, we want to inject some sort of color in there that sort of contrasts, uh, you know, with the, with the subject. So, you know, since they're kind of a warmer color, uh, we decided to go with the cool color gel on the background to create that visual interest with the color contrast, complementary colors. Yeah. And, and sometimes uh, this is a great chance to incorporate your client's preferences too, you know, and have them be part of creating the, the image, which, uh, you know, in our experience, our clients absolutely love that. But if we're doing a send off like this, we want to gel, uh, you know, the backlight to, to light up whatever's going in the air. Sometimes we'll just ask them like, hey, what's your favorite color? And we have all of the creative gels. So they can pick any color and we've got that that color to be able to slap on the light. And, you know, they're impressed because, I mean, they're just impressed by the magnets. Well, also, <laughs> we, have also the, yeah. we have the creative gels, but we also have the is it artistic, artistic gels yeah. so that if someone says something like, oh, my favorite color is teal yeah. or fuchsia or something like that. Right. We probably have something very close. And then they're impressed when we're able to pull that out and they're like, oh, wow you actually were able to use my exact favorite color for this. Um, but if they don't have a, a you know, a strong uh, opinion, then we'll just go with something that's sort of complimentary. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're light, if we're doing two different lights, maybe we'll do a red and a blue or a green and a red, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's endless options for sure. Love that. Um, Michael is asking, it's kind of similar to what I was saying with, with the gels. So for sparklers, do you also, you, you tend, you said you use the blues as sparklers as well mm -hmm. to kind of get that creative contrast. We don't get a lot of sparkler exits in Colorado because um, yeah. fireworks are allowed or disallowed in the summertime, and we don't want to be those photographers that are responsible for <laughs> burn burning down, down the, the state. entire state. Yeah, yeah. If you sense. breathe too hard in Colorado, something lights on fire. It feels like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we don't do a ton of sparklers in us, but we have done a few, and we'll occasionally yeah, put a, a creative gel on that back flash, basically to backlight the smoke coming off of the of the sparklers, uh, which always looks cool. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, same thing, ask them either what their favorite color is, you can throw any number of gels on there or, or uh, pick something that's going to create, you know, that complementary uh, color as well. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. He's saying, yeah, I forgot about that. Every wedding in Florida has them. <laughs> same with yeah. Arizona, actually. Well, the cool thing about it is people get create have to get creative, right? Like the UK, if you can't yeah. use the standard thing, now they're like, well, what else can we do? They'll do yeah. like biodegradable confetti or yeah. water. Or, well, and that's um, how the water one was actually really fun because we had wanted to do actually a champagne spray and send off for a while. But it's really hard to convince people like, hey, at the end of the night, can we just spray champagne at this dress that you spent thousands of dollars on? And so we had it in our mind like, OK, well, what could we do instead that would have a similar effect? And that's when yeah. we decided on the spark 
sparkling water. And the fun behind the scenes moment was uh, we didn't know which kind of bottle would spray the best. So I went to the grocery <laughs> store and I bought like 10 different bottles of sparkling water. And we went out in our backyard and just shook them up and sprayed them. And our neighbors don't know what to think about what we do. We, for living. <laughs> we experiment a lot in our backyard, whether it's like smoke bombs or holy powder or spraying this or that yeah. fire extinguishers. And our neighbors, I think, have no idea what we do for a living, or they think that we're just like we're the, we have too much time on our hands. We're the crazy neighbors that that are just doing weird things in their backyard all the time, you know. They're they're probably looking at you guys, going, "Those are those Instagram influencers." Yeah, <laughs> do it doing for the grand photos. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, you guys. Exactly. Um. Very cool. You guys, this has been uh, quite a treat. And I know we're hitting the hour mark and I, I don't want to keep you guys uh, too, too much longer. Um, but wow, there's been so much good information that, that has uh, come out of this uh, chat with you guys. I really super, super appreciate Christian and Jesse and Moria for being here with me. Thank you so much. Oh, we appreciate Thank you. you taking the time. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. I'll have to come up with a better format for three people so we don't have to all be so Um Yeah. Hey, we got Lanny's tuning in as well. He's saying right on. <laughs> awesome stuff. Hey, Lanny. How are you doing? Hey, Lanny. Appreciate Lanny being here as well. Um, we got to get Lanny and Erica on here. Lanny, if you're listening, let's chat. So, guys, again, thank you so much. I want to make sure everybody sees this one last time here. Um, and so I'm going to pull this up one more time This uh, and put you guys in there as well. Guys, go check it out. November 2nd through the 4th, 2021, Denver, Colorado. No better time to be in Denver, right? Uh, be there part of the <laughs> LaPlante and Cardona Fusion Fusion Workshop and on sale May 20th. So, again, if you need to go find it, it is on their website, jlaplante.com slash workshops, or I imagine... Jesse, you probably have it on your main website as well, right? If you just go to jlaplant.com, there's probably a place for photographers or something along those lines. Yep. It says workshops right at the top of that page, so you'll find it that way. Yeah. But yeah. We hope to uh, see you guys all out in Colorado in November. It could be 75 degrees or it could be 25 degrees. We have no idea, <laughs> but we're looking forward to finding out. <laughs> you know what, though? In Denver, that's every single day of the year. Like it could be it July is, and, and it will be, it will be 25 degrees in the morning and it will be a hundred degrees in the afternoon. Denver is crazy. Yeah, well, we got, we got eight inches of snow yesterday and uh, today it's about 70 degrees and sunny. So uh, yeah, you never know. You never it's know. that high plains desert, you know? <laughs> That's it. Hey, before we roll, uh, I'm going to just, uh, Shannon Kane says, I miss this. Well, oh, geez, worry, Shannon, Shannon, come on. Shannon. <laughs> It'll be on YouTube, right? Exactly. Yep. That's exactly it. Guys, uh, if you did miss this, like Shannon, um, then here, I'll throw myself up there so people aren't wondering who's chatting here. Um, go check it out on YouTube and uh, we will get it up there in about maybe two hours or so. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to watch it live, make sure you're in the MagMod community. Make sure you like the MagMod page. And when you see these go live, you can actually tell Facebook, hey, when these go live in the future, I want to be notified of it. Um, I always enjoy these. I learned so much. Uh, I feel totally unworthy being in the presence of everybody that's on these shows, but, but man, it makes me uh, be inspired for my next shoot. I'm always excited for it. So thank you so much, Christian, Jesse, Mora. Super appreciate all you guys for being here. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Brother. We really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, Love absolutely. to see you guys. Thanks, everyone here. <laughs> KM Penny saying you got to go to New York next, and Chelsea <laughs> says you can't wait to move to Denver. So nice. Awesome. We'll see you guys. All Have right. a great one. Take care, everyone. Appreciate it. Bye, guys. Thank you.